If you have an Android phone, you've probably heard of a thing called Android Auto before. It's a very clever thing that allows you to put selected apps onto your car screen. But why would you want to do that? Well, say for example, you don't like your car sat nav. You can use Google Maps from your phone on the car screen. And same goes for music streaming services as well. Say you want to play Spotify, for example, on your car screen, you can do that as well. These are all things that you can do on Android Auto, plus many, many more things. So in this video today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how to connect up via wired or wireless. And then I'll show you a few basic things on how to get you going on Android Auto. So first up then guys, connecting wirelessly. Now this does depend on the car you have because some cars actually don't have a wireless receiver, in which case you will have to connect via a cable, which I have in here and I'll show you how to do that in just a second as well. But for reference, most of the time it is a USB-C cable, especially for the modern phones anyway. So connecting via wireless is as simple as connecting via Bluetooth. So typically on a car, it will vary depending on the model, but find the home screen, go to the phone section, and then go to connect device. And then usually you just leave it on this screen. In this car, it says MBUX. So for the next bit we do is go onto the phone, then go to settings, connections, and then Bluetooth. And then in here, it will just be searching for various devices. Now you can connect it either way. So you can tap on the phone first or the car first. It doesn't matter, but just do one. So I'm just gonna go that one. And then on the phone, confirm the pass key. So yep. And then just follow all the steps. So here, Android Auto accept and start and then connect and then it will make a high-speed connection over Bluetooth and Wi-Fi combined to give you Android Auto. Now because Android Auto actually accesses quite a few components so things like here on contacts, call logs, location, microphone, it will ask are you happy to share this information? Of course you'll need to tap yes to make this work. So there we go that's it all connected up and as you can see Android Auto is up and running. We'll go through that in just a second but let me show you how to connect it via the cable as well as although technically it is plug and play there are a few key points to remember with connecting via cable. Now, for the most part, connecting via cable should, and I say should lightly, <laughs> it should be as simple as plug and play. So literally plug in and it should just work. However, there are a few key things to remember with plugging in via cable. Not all cables are the same. They might have the same connection, but some will only provide power. So when you plug it in, it will start charging, which is great, but Android Auto requires a data connection along that same cable. So if that cable is only rated for power, then you can come across that issue. Now, annoyingly with USB-C, there is no universal standard for it. So the best thing I can suggest is use the cable that came with the phone or just get a high quality cable that you know will work with data. Simply just plug it in and make sure, of course, you're plugging it into the correct USB-C port on the car as well. And it should just pop up that quick. Accept and start. And then same prompts as before on the phone. Allow access. And there we go, all connected. Now for the duration of this video, I'm gonna leave it connected via the cable just because it's a little bit quicker. There is a slight lag on wireless and just for the purposes of this video, it's just a bit more reliable with me keeping it connected via cable. Plus it'll keep my phone charged too. So I'm gonna leave it on the cable, but now let's go through Android Auto. So when you first turn on Android Auto for the first time, you'll be presented with this kind of split screen view just here. Now I'll run through that uh, primarily in just a second, but I just wanna show you how to access all the other apps first. And that is on the bottom right hand corner there with the kind of menu layout button. So tap this button here and this will show you all the apps available on your phone. So if you notice, those are the apps you've actually already downloaded. So for this demonstration today, I downloaded Spotify and Waze in advance just to show you how it works. But if you wanna go back to that main screen that we saw with the split screen view, just tap that button again down there on the bottom right and it will go back to the way it was before. Now, one key component of Android Auto and things like Apple CarPlay for iPhones is that there's a voice assistant built in. So with this, you actually have Hey Google all built into the voice assistant. And because I said the words, you can see it automatically come up on screen there. So it's particularly clever that this is all built in and so useful when you're driving because then you don't need to operate the screen, you can just talk to it. Now there's a few ways of activating this. You can of course say the activation phrase, which is of course, hey Google, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you for asking. I hope you're doing well too. So yeah, she's doing well, that's good. Now you can also activate this using the button just here, so you can tap that, same thing. Now if you want to cancel it, just touch anywhere on the screen and it will go back. And then the other way, on most cars, there's also a voice button on the steering wheel. So typically when you press it, it will load your car's 
voice assistant. So depending on the makeup model, it will load that one up. But if you hold it, it will activate the, the Google one. So one final thing before we go through the different types of apps, so we'll go through that in just a second. Notice there on the right hand side there is a recently used dock. This allows you to quickly access the apps that you were just on, a bit like a task selector, usually on Android, the button at the bottom to cycle between your most recently used apps. Very similar thing. So for the rest of the video, I'm gonna separate this into a few sections here. So use the chapters down below if you want to skip ahead. But the first up, I'm gonna go through navigation. So I'll show you how to use Google Maps and how to download other ones as well, just in case you don't wanna use that one. Then we'll go through communication, so messages and phone. Then after that, we'll go through entertainment as well. So I can show you how to download and use certain apps for music and that sort of thing. But first up, navigation. Now, of course, Android having a very close tie with Google, they have Google Maps built in and pretty much pre-installed on every phone out there. So to load this up, you can either tap on the map or if you go to menu and then go to maps, you'll see here it will load up full screen, which I think is much better, to be honest. Now, to use this, it is very, very simple. You just tap on search on the top or, of course, if your car has a touchpad or a multifunction wheel, use that as well. And it will probably spin around and cycle the different menu elements. But for this, of course, as I mentioned, is a touchscreen. So search. So notice you've got recent categories and saved. So if you go to search all destinations, you can just type in where you want to go. So let's say I want to go to the nearest city to where I am. You just type in on the keyboard where you want to go and it will just kind of populate from there. So Southampton, it will give you an ETA, so one hour, four minutes. There's also an eco route there available as well. You can add stops along the way, save as a favorite, or the cross at the top will go back. But let's go start. Now, by default, you'll probably have the sat now talking to you right now. I actually have it muted. And if you want to have it muted, you can control that on the speaker symbol on the top right there. So you just tap in here. You can have alerts only unmuted so that'll of course give you directions or muted which i'll keep it muted just for now now to cancel the sat nav very very easy just press the cross button on the bottom and then you're back to square one again now of course you don't have to use google maps if you want to use another one so as i mentioned there's loads of different ones you can download on the play store Waze is a very very popular one because of the community aspect behind it and arguably actually probably the reporting element of it is a little bit better and a lot more precise if we go to the menu Go on to Waze, and it's a very similar layout. But notice the recently used apps have now changed slightly. Similar layout up here, you can just search where you want to go, Southampton, and go now. Now I've also just noticed that's in kilometers, so to change that, I'll actually need to get my phone out and change it there. I, I have only just downloaded Waze, so I haven't actually set it up or uh, used it on this uh, device just yet. But yeah, there's a few customization things you can do on there, change the car icon and all sorts. But I'm just going to cancel that for now. Now, on top of all of that, you don't actually have to type out destinations. You can just navigate there on the voice assistant. So using the microphone or the microphone here or uttering the phrase to activate it, you can actually navigate to various places without having to type it in. Hey, Google, navigate me to pool. And that is navigate so much quicker. <laughs> Now, up next is communication. So, of course, with Android Auto, just like connecting via Bluetooth, you can make calls and also send text messages as well. So, a couple of ways you can do this. You can do this via just tapping on phone and, of course, bring up your contacts there. So, you can view all your contacts there from your phone or if they're saved on your SIM. And I believe it should also work from your Google account as well. But just in case it doesn't, transfer it to your phone, then you'll be able to see them. You can view your most recent ones view your favorites, and of course, they'll all be listed there. Now, these are all blank at the moment just because I don't use this phone as a daily phone. I've just set this up for this uh, for this video here. On top of this, you can also do it via the voice assistant. So I would just go, call Nick. Got it, calling Nick. And then it'll make that call just like that. It's been forwarded to voicemail. The now you can also send text messages as well, or even have the text messages read out to you. Uh, typically it doesn't show you all that information when you're driving from when it pops up on the screen, but you can view it on the home screen here. So just go into messages and then you can view all of your messages there, have it read aloud or even reply straight from there. So pretty clever. Again, similar thing. If you want to send a text message, you can either say the activation phrase, Hey Google, send a text message to Nick. What's the message? I hope you will finish the Android Auto tutorial video today. 
I got. I hope you will finish the Android Auto tutorial video today. Ready to send it? Yes. Sending your message to Nick. I hope I put the right number in there, otherwise someone will get a random message that makes no sense. <laughs> Then of course, after this, we have entertainment. Now with Android Auto, just like again, connecting via Bluetooth, you can play music. But the thing is with Android Auto is that it's a lot more graphical. You can browse your artists, your albums, your safe playlists, all from your library, from your favorite music streaming provider. So if we load up Spotify, of course, then it will show you your entire library, all your recently played music and that sort of thing. So pretty handy that all of this just works straight out of the box and of course then you control the volume using your car's multimedia system wherever the volume control might be now again just like before you can give it voice commands and ask it to play certain things so play black holes and revelations by muse got it here's the album black holes and revelations on spotify and of course then it will start playing so yeah it's so easy to have all this at your fingertips, especially when you need to be focusing on driving and you can just give it a command without even taking your hands off the steering wheel. So pretty cool. So those are the basics, of course. Now you will have noticed there are a few more icons on here. You'll notice on the top left here, it says MBUX. Now this will actually vary depending on your make or model of car. It basically just exits to the main multimedia system of the car. So this is Mercedes-Benz and the multimedia system in this is called MBUX. So if I tap this, it's just gonna to go to the home screen like that. Now in this particular car, to go back to Android Auto, on the top right there, you'll see Android Auto, tap that and it'll go straight back. Now you'll also see there's a calendar there as well. So if you do have to run your life on a calendar, much like I do most of the time, you can have all your appointments in there or things you need to do listed on the car screen. So you can see what you need to do when you get to a certain place. There's also a thing called game snacks on here as well, which I found quite surprising because I've made a few videos on uh, Apple CarPlay before. You can play games on Android Auto. You can't do that on Apple CarPlay, which is um, interesting. And yeah, there we go. So I guess this is a, oh, I see it's a swipe, left and right. Yeah, so, ah, there, there we go. <laughs> Clearly wasn't paying attention. I guess it could be useful if you have an electric car and you're at a charge point or you're waiting to pick someone up or something like that and you just need to, you know, kill some time. Pretty cool you can do it on the, uh, on the car screen. Now, of course, there's a few other things on here like Google News and settings and Samsung smart things and weather. There's loads of other things you can do on Android Auto. So guys, if you'd like me to make a tips and tricks video for Android Auto, let me know in the comment section. And of course, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section as well. And I'll happily produce a video on Android Auto, seeing as I have an Android phone for this video here. But yes, guys, there we go. That concludes this week's video. Let me know your thoughts down below. If you'd like me to cover a tips and tricks video for Android Auto, let me know in that comment section. And of course, I could even make a troubleshooting guide as well in case you guys get stuck. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, see you then.